Anytime you add an element to your canvas, its position type is set to default. It stays where you set it and moves in and out of view while visitors scroll through your site. But to create a different scroll experience, you can change the position type to sticky or pinned. Let me show you how it's done. In the inspector, under position and position type, you'll see default, sticky, and pinned. Let's go through the pinned position first. This lets you lock elements to the position of their parent containers. When we pin an element, we can choose where to pin it to. In this case, either the cell, section, or the page. When an element is pinned to the page, it'll stay on screen no matter the position of all other sections. And the position you set is relative to your entire viewport. So as you scroll, it stays pinned to its position in the viewport and is always visible as you scroll up and down the page. To change the position of a pinned element, we can just change its docking over here, and then add margins, or just drag it on the canvas. Then in preview, you can see that the element stays in the position you set within the viewport. Sometimes you're going to have content set to overflow scroll. For example, with this section, you might want to place a bunch of elements off the screen so people can scroll through them. But you might also want to add an element that sticks in place. We have this button here that moves as we scroll through the container, but we actually want it to stay in place while the other elements move. In this case, you can use the pinned position to make sure that it stays put as we scroll. Pinned position can also be used for sections on the edge of the canvas, like headers and footers. Here, our first section is the header. When we set it to pinned, it's automatically pinned to the page, since that's its parent. And if we try to pin this section under the header, we can see it's not available. Let's preview the site to see how the header behaves. As we scroll, it stays visible at the top of the viewport. And when we pin a header or footer, it automatically overlaps its adjacent section. Some things to keep in mind here. When you pin an element, you're essentially parenting it to its page or section page, which changes the structure of your site. Because of that, applying the pinned position is a cross breakpoint action, meaning you can't adjust it on just one breakpoint. But if you set a global section as pinned, it won't be saved on the global section. That means you can set a different position type for that global section on each page that it appears. And if you pinned your default header or footer and want to add a new section as a global header, you need to remove the pin on your default header first. So now let's talk about the sticky position. When you set an element to the sticky position, It'll stick in the viewport until you reach the bottom of its parent container, or until you reach the element position that you set it to. Exactly how it behaves depends on whether you stick it to the top, bottom, or bottom to top. The way your elements will scroll relies on the length of the section. So to have elements enter one after the other and stick throughout your site, we'll need to place them one below the other from the top of the canvas in one tall section. Let's walk through them all so you can see how they work. If you set the element's position type to top, the element will scroll with its parent until the top edge of the element hits the top edge of the viewport. Then the element will stick to the top. And it'll stop sticking once the bottom edge of the element hits the bottom edge of its parent. Let's set the first image to sticky too, but this time add a top offset to keep some space between the element to the top of the viewport. In preview, the title enters and sticks to the top of the screen, and the image enters after some buffer time, depending on how you set your page to scroll and where you place the image. Then it'll stick to the top with the offset we added. If you set the element's position type to bottom, like this, it'll stick to the bottom of the viewport. So once the parent enters the viewport, the sticky element will stick to the bottom of the screen. Unlike the top setting, when it seemed to get pushed by the upper boundary of the viewport, here it's getting dragged by the bottom boundary. And it stops sticking once the element reaches its original position in the Studio Editor. To see this another way, 
let's move the element to the center. So now, the section enters with the element at the bottom. And when we reach the center of the section, which is where we originally placed that element, it stops sticking and scrolls with the rest of the section. And we can change that offset value here as well. The offset here is only for the bottom offset, but if we want to add some space to the element from the top, we can add some margins. And our last option. Setting the element's position to bottom and top sets the behavior from both of those position types at the same time. So, as you scroll towards the sticky element, it will appear here within its parent until the bottom edge of the viewport meets the bottom edge of the element. Then it will stick to the bottom of the viewport until it reaches its original position. But once the top edge of the viewport meets the top edge of the element, it'll stick to the top until the bottom edge of the element meets the bottom edge of its parent. We can add an offset here for both directions and also add margins to keep some distance from the top of the viewport once the element enters the canvas. We can apply this sticky position to sections too to create a sticky scroll effect. When we set an entire section to sticky top, it'll scroll to the top of the viewport, then stick there. Then the section below it scrolls up, over, or underneath it, depending on how your sections are arranged. Let's set those sections to sticky as well. On those sections, the page itself is the parent. And since the page is already in the viewport all the time, sticky sections will always stay in the viewport. So if you want your header or footer to stick and not overlap, you just need to set it to sticky. A few things to keep in mind. Unlike pinned position, which affects every breakpoint, you can adjust sticky position on each breakpoint individually. But just like pinned position, sticky won't be saved on global sections. So a global section can be sticky on one page and defaults on another. So now you know how to adjust the position behaviors of your elements and sections. Next up, we'll cover how to add animations and interactions to make your pages even more dynamic. I'll meet you there.